Hi everyone, this is Dan with Forex Boat Trading Academy. Happy to be with you today. Today's tutorial is going to cover maximizing profits. Why the right risk to reward ratio is not enough. And so today's tutorial is actually an interesting one because we're getting into topics that relate to our exiting of trades, taking profits, cutting losses, money management, right? So these are topics that tend to sometimes stress out traders a little bit. And so as you can see in this bit of a comic cartoon here to start off, we actually see a situation in this, in this cartoon where a trader is actually faced with a situation where perhaps using reward to risk ratios would be in their best interest. Why? Well, this particular trader is sweating bullets watching this instrument that he's trading. Let's say it's a currency pair like Euro US dollar. It's plummeting, right? It's falling fast. And I, I think reading between the lines, you can tell that uh, he's trying to frantically take notes, but what might serve him better is to have some type of risk to reward ratio in place before entering the trade, right? Then perhaps the situation might not be as stressful and the trader behind him on the phone also probably wouldn't be as worried. And so uh, risk to reward ratios are valuable in the, in, in the sense that they bring some level of greater control uh, to your trading uh, than if you otherwise are not using risk to reward ratios. And I think that's a big reason why traders implement them uh, you know, as early as possible. Now, let's cover though specifically what is a risk to reward ratio, just to make sure that it's completely clear. Okay, so, the risk to reward ratio as currency traders, how this matters to us is that the ratio specifies how much a trader is willing to risk on a certain trade in pip terms or in dollar terms to pursue a specified return or reward on the same trade, again, in pip or dollar terms. So looking at an example here, I'm a trader. If I'm risking a loss of 50 pips on a given trade, to earn 100 pips on the same trade, then my risk to reward ratio is one to two. It can also be said that my reward to risk ratio is two to one. So you can refer to them in either direction, risk to reward or reward to risk, okay? Now, it, uh, this ratio can also be expressed in dollar terms if it's a little easier to grasp. So let's use an example of, again, I'm a trader, I'm about to enter a particular trade, Let's say that I'm willing to risk $50 on the trade. I'm willing to risk, I'm willing to lose $50, okay, in an attempt to earn $150 on the same trade. If that's the case, then my risk to reward ratio is one to three, right? Because $150 is three times $50. So my profit target is three times further away from my entry price than my stop loss level in this case so that that tells you you know what the risk to reward ratio is it's quite straightforward and these pip and dollar terms will really work for any instrument whether it's a currency pair or a commodity it operates the same way so how do we use this in our day-to-day -day forex trading okay we're going to pull up the charts here in just a second but the first step would be to identify your optimal entry point on a trade right so that involves of course the instrument you want to trade okay today we're going to take a look first at the australian dollar versus the us dollar okay next the direction that you're looking to trade right so uh whether you're looking to buy the currency pair or sell the currency pair okay once you have that now you've identified basically uh, most of what you need to get into the trade you might be using some you know deeper analysis to identify the best entry point but in a, essentially you have uh, what you need to get into the trade. Now this is where the reward to risk ratio comes in. Number two, we determine our profit target on the trade. Where are we looking to go out, get out of the trade, if this trade works in our favor, right? That's always the, what we wanna think about. It's always the nice part of the trade. Next, we would think about, uh, based on where we'd like to take our profit, if the trade does move against us, okay, what level do we want to exit our trade on the, on the losing side? Where do we want to cut our losses or have our maximum loss? Okay, we have to always think about both sides of the market, right? Because on any given trade, 
uh, a loss is possible and we want to make sure our loss is contained and that is the whole purpose of this reward to risk ratio so once we have the profit target okay as well as the maximum loss level our reward to risk ratio is formed it's in place and at that point you can determine whether you feel that that is a healthy reward to risk ratio so for example we looked at two to one earlier uh, in the previous slide and three to one no those are healthy reward to risk ratios because your profit target uh is further away from the market than your stop loss level uh so many traders would find depending upon the instrument depending upon the time frame you know that can work out well for you but you know again it depends on what instrument you're trading and what time frame that you're trading on which we're going to talk about towards the end of the tutorial so let's go to the charts because it'd be good to look at a couple tactical examples now i mentioned that we were going to take a look at uh, australian dollar us dollar okay let me pull that chart up now australian dollar us dollar is a good example because it's a it's a nicely trending currency pair okay and australian dollar is typically referred to as a risk on currency pair when the markets are hungry for risk when stocks are doing well uh on the fundamental side uh when there's money pouring into the uh risky assets australian dollar generally performs well and so now as we are entering july 2020 a big question on traders minds is is we are seeing a bit of a embracing of risk right now but there's a lot of naysayers, right? There's a lot of people who feel that uh, this risk appetite is going to go away. Part of it related to coronavirus, uh, you know, and other matter, other matters as well. So that might lead me to believe that selling the Australian dollar is a good idea against the U.S. dollar because I think there's going to be a flight to safety, for example. Uh, and I think that uh, you know the the appetite for the Australian dollar is going to go down, and that might be further validated technically when I look at the chart here, okay, and I see some resistance really forming here, just above 69, the 69 level. Markets really had a tough time here on the four-hour chart, uh, getting above these levels, and I think you know heading into the Asian trading session uh, tomorrow. Think we could see perhaps a breakdown in the Australian dollar. So that's just a bit of a hypothetical picture painting of the background of the market on this pair. And so now we get into uh, trade identification. So I just painted a picture of why I would want to consider selling Australian dollar, US dollar. Market's right above 69. I like this entry price. I know it's facing resistance. I'm toward, we're towards the top end of what I would call a wick farm here. So these wicks are all bundled together, these candles, and we're trading towards the top. So these prices above 69 look favorable. So I know now that I'm gonna be shorting Australian dollar, US dollar. Okay, now I'm looking at, remember our point from the slide of what steps to take, profit target, right? The action point here is to identify, now that I know I'd like to be short, and I'm okay, and this short price, this price is optimal to go short above 69, where am I going to take my profit, right? Well, I might find that uh, the 68 level is a reasonable profit target, okay? If we see that's the next real significant level of support, we've traded there just as, you know, very recently, we've been trading there as recently as uh, June 21st. So this is a profit level that is quite reasonable. I'm making no less than 100 pips on the trade. So let's say at the time of my entry, you know, I'm just above 69 on my short side. I'm taking my profit at 68, okay, 68 even. Okay, that's 100 pips. So we'll call it 100 pips. Now I know what my profit target is, okay, and I know how much I'm going to make on that trade. I'm going to make 100 pips. If I'm trading one mini contract, I know that that's a profit of 100 US dollars, okay, if each pip is worth $1. So it's pretty simple math at that point. Now, Given that I'm looking to take a profit of 100 pips, how much am I willing to risk or lose in an effort to make that 100 pips? Well, I also see what would be a very reasonable stop loss level, or where I would take my cut my losses if the trade moved against me, would be 68.50. Excuse me, 69.50. Okay, 69.50 is 
uh, another level, significant level of resistance for this pair. And it's reasonable to put your stop loss level at 69.50 because if the market breaks above 69.50, Okay, you have a lot of the pair has a lot of room to run to the upside, and you definitely don't want to be in the trade at that juncture. And so the nice thing about why is 69.50 also nice? Because it gives us an exact two to one reward to risk ratio, or said another way, a one to two risk to reward ratio. So I'm risking half as much as I'm looking to make on this trade. My profit target's at 68 and my stop loss level is at 69.50. Very clean, two to one reward to risk. Let's look at one more, because I think in today's in trading environment, uh, dollar Swiss is an interesting pair to talk about briefly. Why? Because again, we're in an environment right now where a lot of traders are expecting a flight to risk or think that a flight to, uh, risk uh a flight to safety from risk is in the cards it's something that that will be coming sooner or later and so if you're somebody who believes in safety right now and you think that okay gold for example is now nearly at 1800 us dollars per ounce so you know even trade people who aren't trading are seeing that gold is surging some are saying you know that's an indication that a flight to safety is going to also be reflected in other instruments soon. And if you believe that, okay, which is reasonable, okay, then you might very well believe that the Swiss franc, okay, is going to continue to strengthen against the US dollar, right? So there's a lot of dollar bulls right now, but a contrarian trader, somebody who's kind of thinking of things a little differently, might look at the Swiss franc as a potential pair that the currency that they want to buy, meaning they would sell US dollars and buy Swiss franc, which means what? It means I want to sell dollar Swiss. So again, I'm painting a bit of a picture here of what the thought process would be behind such trade. I was zoomed in on the four hour chart. I just zoomed out to a daily chart to kind of give ourselves a bit of perspective. Let's look at the weekly chart quickly. Okay, the weekly chart tells a very interesting picture. Okay, uh, we have the, the pair has been breaking down. Okay, and really the next level of support, I mean, we can go down to the 92 level, really, is where uh, I see significant support now. But we know the pair, let's be a little bit more conservative. Okay, let's say we're going to target uh, the 93 level. Okay, so we're going to take profit at the 93 level for dollar Swiss because we see an imminent breakdown coming. I mean, we've, we've held below on the weekly chart, we've held below support going back to uh, significant support going back to a couple of years ago. And now we're looks very likely that we're going to retest the lows, okay, that we saw in March, okay, of earlier this year. So, what does that mean? It means I have a short trade on dollar Swiss. I have my rationale. Now I need my profit target. I'm going to set my profit target at the 93 level. I know that 92 is also very conceivable, but for the moment, I'm not going to get too greedy because this is more of a medium to long term trade. So a profit target of 93 basically means that I'm going to be looking at, let's call it 150 pips. Let's say I wind up entering this trade later in the trading session and I wind up entering at 94.50. 9450 the the difference between 9450 and 93 even is 150 pips that's a nice juicy profit if i'm able to capture the whole thing now again if i want to use a specific reward to risk ratio okay now i have to start thinking about the flip side okay what if this trade moves against me right if it moves against me where am i going to cut my losses well a reasonable level if you enter at 94.50 would be 95 even okay or perhaps slightly above 95 uh you know just above so you don't get shaken out perhaps on a test of 95 but let's say even at 95.05 right that's about a 50 pip stop loss okay so in this case if you're going to put your stop at 95 okay now that we've looked at this weekly chart 
we can go back and zoom in again on our four hour chart. If I'm gonna put my stop loss at 95, and I already know that my take profit is at 93, what does that mean? It means that I'm risking 50 pips to earn 150 pips. So it's a one to three risk to reward ratio or a three to one reward to risk ratio. So if the trade works out in my favor and I take my profit at 93, okay, that means that I wound up earning three times as much on the trade as I risked from the beginning. Okay, that's a three to one ratio. So now let's go back to our presentation here. Just to cover, you know, now we understand how to use reward to risk ratios in uh you know in real markets in the real market. However, where can it go wrong, right? So where why are sometimes risk to reward ratios not enough? And what do we also need to consider? Because what do we know now in 2020? Markets are very volatile, right? Going back to that cartoon, that trader was sweating bullets. And so uh, we know that that can sometimes lead to us, you know, forcing ourselves to use these types of ratios. But we also have to think about some of the drawbacks that can come into play when we use uh, such ratios. And the first one is, is that the risk to reward ratios do not account for whipsaws in the market, particularly before or after unforeseen news events, right? Any of us who have been in the market and traded news knows that the market can uh, go very fast in one direction and then reverse very quickly and move the other direction. And this all can be, you know, in a matter of minutes, we can have 100 pips in one direction and 100 pips you know, in another direction in less than 30 minutes if we're talking about an event like you know, US non-farm payrolls. And that type of move is referred to as a whipsaw. And many times uh, a reward to risk ratio won't help you very much if the market engages in a whipsaw because you'll get stopped out prematurely uh, and you're, you're not able to withstand the volatility in the market that's occurring in the very near term. Right, so your reward to risk ratio might hold up in the medium term or the long term, um, uh, you know, barring any unforeseen news events. But in the short term, you know, one big news event can shake the whole trade out, right? And that's where things cannot go as expected. The second point is why they might not be enough is they oversimplify price action, particularly during uh, less liquid trading sessions. So when you get into a trade like the one I showed on Australian dollar or the one I showed on the Swiss franc. You have to pay attention to when you're trading. Okay, what trading session are you in? Is it the, the New York, the Tokyo um, session, or are you in the European trading session? Because, and, and what currency pair are you trading? So you understand the behavior of that currency pair during that session and how liquid it can be. So typically you wanna be using these ratios during the most liquid conditions possible, okay? Or else, you know, something can go awry or differently than we expected. The third point is such ratios tend to be primarily effective for longer term and lower leverage traders, which are the minority of the market, right? So many of us are short term, high leverage traders. Now, reward to risk ratios can work for those traders, but they have to remember that because of higher leverage, then uh, you know that can affect the that can impact the trade um, in terms of how quickly you're forced to exit if the trade moves against you. Essentially, it forces you to keep your stops tighter, your stop loss orders tighter to your entry, then you might really want to keep them. But because you're using high leverage, you're forced to. Uh, so if you're a trader that really wants to use these types of ratios, I would strongly consider lowering your leverage basis in your trading account. And the final point, for the right type of trending instruments, risk to reward ratios have merit. Uh, otherwise, they're being used at the wrong place in the wrong time by short-term traders. So that's really just a reminder to keep in mind what trading style you're using, what leverage you're using. If you're using the right leverage uh, and the right uh, trading style, reward to risk ratios can be a really valuable tool for you just to be sure to use them the right way. Uh, and you can go back to our Australian dollar and dollar Swiss examples again if you'd like to review that. So with that, we're going to wrap up today's tutorial. I hope it's been informative. Uh, and if you'd like some other great content uh, from us here at Forex Boat, 
Be sure to subscribe to the Forex Boat YouTube channel. You'll get a ton of other fantastic content that will really set you straight. And with that, we're going to wrap it up for today's tutorial. Thanks for coming in, folks, and have a great rest of the day.